What's your favorite scary movie? No, really, I genuinely want to know. Because today, we're going to be living in a horror film of our own. One where everyone else is dead. We're the only ones left. We are the final girl. Which just so happens to be the name of the game we're playing today in this episode of Table for One. I'm Paula, and today we are playing Final Girl, designed by Evan Derrick and AJ Porfirio, and published by Van Ryder Games, who helped sponsor this episode. The Final Girl is a term coined by Carol J. Clover and is a classic horror film trope. It involves a female protagonist who is a lone survivor, making an incredible stand against all odds and reclaiming her power by transforming from helpless victim to Final Girl. Final Girl has a variety of horror films you can play in, and each feature film box comes with two Final Girls who you can add to your cast of characters. But today, we'll be playing with me. Van Ryder Games made this awesome promo card, and you can help support Watch It Played by clicking the link in the description below and getting your own copy of this promo. We've also been saved from the typical terror of having to discover the solo mode on our own because if you want to know the nitty gritty for how to play Final Girl, Rodney has a full rules video for how to play this solo only game. Click on that link in the description below, learn how to play, and then come on back here and we'll dive in. Ready? Wish me luck. Okay, here we are, all set up and ready to go. We're going to be playing the location Camp Happy Trails and we are going to be facing Hans the Butcher. They say Hans wears a worn butcher smock stained with blood. His sledgehammer, which he drags behind him, supposedly weighs over 50 pounds and could crush an elephant's skull. He's over seven feet tall, and his eyes glow a bright scarlet. But the worst part is the iron mask he wears, fashioned to look like a pig, and the wet, crunching sounds that can be heard beneath it. That's disgusting. That is uh, what we're doing here at, uh, at Camp Happy Trails, facing off against Hans. So he has 12 health, so we have 11 hearts here, and then his final health token, which we will flip over once we've gotten him all the way down to zero and see if he suddenly comes back with a little more life. And then I start with five health, so we have my four health tokens and my fifth one here, which will do the same thing. If I get all the way down to zero, we'll flip that over and see if magically I come back in a classic horror movie twist. His horror levels to start is four, so we have our marker here, horror level four. That means we will start rolling with two dice, and we have our bloodlust marked at one. We have our uh, item decks all set up here at our different locations, at the cabins, the dock, and the utility shed. And all we really have left to do at this point is flip over our setup and see what our starting event is. So let's see how we want to set up Camp Happy Trails. Okay, so this is called the bonfire. So this means uh, this is where the final girl starts. That's me. So I'm gonna be in this location. I'm gonna lay all my meeples down flat just so they're a little easier to see on camera. Then we have our killer is here at the cabins. So we'll put the red meeple there. Terrifying. Okay, and then here's our number of victims in a couple different places. So we have two at Makeout Point. Of course, cause you can't go to Makeout Point alone. Let's see, we have one here at this random spot, one here at this random spot, and then a bunch of people at the fire pit because they're all at the bonfire, I get it, so we have six. We'll just like plop them all in here, great, good. It's just a lot of people here at the fire pit. Now, if I can save five of these victims, we'll be able to flip my card over and get to my special ability. I would really like to do that because it says things are getting dicey. Anytime you would roll only one die, roll two instead, which would be pretty amazing. If a single number result is needed, you choose which die to use, which is nice. Ooh, and then I gain time for saving more victims. So I'd like to save five victims so that we can get to my special ability. Fingers crossed, let's see what happens. So now is actually probably a good time for me to point out that I am playing with these play mats from the game. I've decided to do that because I think it's going to just help keep things really visually organized for this video. But I do want to note that this is not standard with the game. It is something you have to purchase separately. 
Okay, so I think we're ready. We just flip over our first event and that will be the last step we need to do to get through setup. Let's see what it is. <laughs> Secret tunnel. Anyone, anyone understand that reference? I hope so. Okay, so this says, this tunnel was the best kept secret of randy teenagers, but now it might save my life. Choose two of the following spaces. Oh, we get like a secret passage. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, utility shed, cabins, or docks, and place a secret tunnel token on each. You may move between these spaces as if they were adjacent. Enemies cannot use the secret tunnel. I think this is, this is really great. Okay, so here's some a variety of tokens that just come with this location that might come into play, it might not, but here's our tunnel tokens. So let's see, utility shed, cabins, or docks. I'm gonna say between the docks and the cabins is where we're gonna put this secret tunnel. So we can now treat the dock and the cabins as though they're adjacent, but luckily Hans doesn't know about this tunnel. It's a secret and you better keep it that way. So now we're ready to go and we have our very first action phase. So I'm actually going to take from my market here all the zero cost action cards, uh, the six of them, and this is our starting hand. So let's see, we have two walk, a weak attack, a short rest, a focus, and a focus. So let's figure out what we want to do. I wanna save some people if I can. Okay, first let's try walking. So I'm going to play down, put my hand of cards just over here. Uh, I'm gonna play down my walk card. And if I can get two successes, I can move up to two spaces. So I'm going to take these two dice and we'll just roll them here and we'll see what we get. <laughs> okay. So we have a fail and then we have a partial success, which doesn't count for anything unless I discard two action cards to turn it into a full success. I'm not gonna convert this. I'm gonna take the fail. I'm gonna move up to one space, which is just gonna get me here. I'm going to lose a health, which isn't amazing. And then I'm gonna lose two time, which takes me down to four here. But what I'm going to do next, I'm gonna try to short rest is my next thing because then I can maybe heal and we'll see what happens. But this one I really need to get successes on because if not, then the horror level goes up and I don't like that at all. Okay, so we got one success. I don't need to spin cards to convert this one because I only have one health to heal back up anyway. So that's fine. I'm gonna heal this back up. Then I'm going to lose one more time, but I feel like this was, look, this is the decision we made. I don't know if it was the right one or not. Okay, I'm gonna try and walk. So that means I roll two dice again. Come on, two successes. Yes. Oh. That felt good, okay. So I'm gonna move up to two spaces and then I'm just gonna take them back to the exit and help them get out of here. That will lose me a time. Now I believe now that they're at the exit, I go, victim, run away, be saved. And they bounce, which means I can put them on my card and get one of these abilities and work toward getting my special power. So they are saved. Now we have to decide which reward we want. We can get two time back Move up to two spaces, heal. We don't want to heal yet. We can take any top item card. Ooh, you know what? I think we're gonna get the trash can lid. I think we might want the decent. So I'm gonna take any top item card. So I'm covering that one up. And then I'm gonna take the trash can lid. And that is now one of the items in my hand. And this gets three little pips. So every time we use it, we will mark one of these dots. And then once we've used it three times, it's busted. Now this doesn't flip over. It just stays like that. So we don't know what else can be found at the utility shed. So now we're going to end my action phase. We're gonna go into my planning phase. So that means we're gonna discard all these cards. Just gonna stick them over here. I have only two time to spend on adding other cards to my hand, which means next turn may not be that great. And I think, I do I wanna get the sprint? Or I can get guard or I can get close call. It might be good to have some movement because right now I actually don't have any movement for next turn. So maybe I'll, I'm gonna uh, spend the two time to get a sprint. So that puts me down to zero. So that's gonna be my hand for next turn. Then we reset our time back to six. I put these back into the market. 
These are all zero cost, so they go into my zero cost action cards. And that's the end of the planning phase. So now it's the killer phase. And the first thing we do is resolve their action here. So first they're going to move toward either a victim or a final girl, whichever one's closest, and then they're going to do an attack. So they have a move right now of one. Oh, they just have a move of one. So they're gonna move toward the closest victim or final girl. And that's gonna be around this way because this victim is one, two, three spaces away. And these are actually, this is an adjacent. So that's one, two, three, four, five spaces away. So you're just gonna go up here. Hans goes there. There's no one for him to attack because he's in a space by himself. So we don't have to worry about that. Now though, we flip over a terror card. He just keeps coming. Oh, the horror level goes up. Well, I don't like that at all. It's one step closer to only being able to roll one die. Just bad with my dice luck. Then he's gonna target the same again, final girl or closest victim, move and then attack again. So this is still his target, it's still closest. So he's gonna move one. And luckily he's still just one space away, so he won't do his attack. <sighs> he's gotten real close to us. This is pretty bad. Like this is gonna be a massacre. <laughs> Okay, we won't have a panic phase because no victims were killed this turn, so we skip that bit. And then we do our upkeep, which means that if uh, there were no tarot cards left, we would go into our finale, but we just started the game, so we have lots of tarot cards, and I think we are good to go. We can also, at this point, rearrange items that we have in our backpack versus our hands, but I only have one item, so we don't have to worry about that right now either. So now we start again, and it's my action phase again. I want to save more people, especially because this one might die but these are gonna go to, okay. First, I'm gonna try to focus. I would like very much to get some time back, to get some extra time this turn to buy more cards and to lower the horror level if I can. So I'm gonna hope I can get some successes on this and focus and be a little less scared. Okay, that's one success and a possible second if I convert. By, I'd have to, oh. Is that worth me discarding the cards to do? I'm not gonna discard the card. I have so few cards and I know I wanted to get time back and now I'm losing time, but I'm worried if I discard two cards now, I only have one left and well, no, you know what? Let's get more, let's get more time. I want more cards. So I will discard these two to convert this into a success, which means the whore is gonna go down by one. We're back to four and I'm gonna gain two time. I only have one card left in my hand, which is a sprint and I'm gonna try and do it. So I'm going to try to sprint and see if I can grab another victim and get them a little further away from Hans. Well, this is a failure <laughs> and this is one success, so that's something. But that means I can move up to two spaces, but I lose another time. So I'm going to, I could go to the docks and then to the cabins and search next turn and that's just gonna, that person will just die. I'm gonna take the secret tunnel. Sorry, victim. I'm gonna go to the dock for one and then I'm going to end up in the cabins for two. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna lose a time for that. Was that good? I don't know. Now we do our planning phase so we can purchase action cards. I have seven time to spend, so that's good. I definitely wanna search. So that's two, one, two, that puts me down to five. It would be nice to like buff myself up a little before I try and attack this guy, but I might need to run in, attack him, run out a little bit. I'll take the sprint. I'll take the sprint for two, one, two. So I have three left to spend. I'm gonna take the guard for two, one, two, and then I'm gonna take a close call for one, one. So that puts me down to zero. I also get to take all my zero cost cards into my hand. You have a hand limit of 10. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're good there. This resets. All of my used cards from the action phase will now go back into the tableau. So we'll do that. And now it's the killer phase. You know what I've realized? Han should not have moved here. In the first part of the killer phase, there's no movement. It's target and then attack. If, you'd, if he's already in the same space as his target. So I think rather than retconning, we're going to recognize that I messed that rule up and get it right from here on out. But I'm not gonna change anything about the state of the game. It is what it is and this victim might die and that's, that's on me. 
So he targets a final girl or victim in his space and attacks. He's all alone, so he won't attack. But let's see what the tarot card says if he's going to move and kill someone. Dark feast. For every victim that is dead, Hans recovers health. Well, no one's died yet. So actually, that was real good. And that's disgusting. You want to think about what that means? That means he's eating his... That's why he's called the butcher. We're connecting it now. This is a horror film. So no one died, so there's no uh, panic phase. And then upkeep, uh, I think we're good to go. So it's my turn again. I'd like to search. First, I'm going to search at the cabins and either get this aluminum bat as a weapon or possibly find something even better. So first I'm gonna search and I'm going to hope to get two successes. Come on, I can't convert this, it's just a total failure. So that means I take the top item card of my space and I lose a time. So I'll just take the aluminum bat and at this point I can swap out what's in my hands. So I'm gonna keep the bat in my, um, in my backpack for now because I don't have an attack in my hand at the moment. I can't really use this. So we're gonna hold on to it until we need it, and then if we think that's coming up in the upkeep phase, we can swap things out from our backpack to our hands. Would it be ridiculous to sprint past him and try and save this victim? Let's do it, it's exciting. So I'm gonna play the sprint. Ugh, do I have a focus in here? No, I want to lower my horror, but I can't. Okay, so I'm gonna sprint. I really could use another die to roll. Uh, and if I get two successes, I can move up to three spaces. And if that works, I'm going to run past Hans into this space with this victim and then see if I can walk them back out to the exit. Okay, success. And then one I can convert if I discard two. Mm. I'm gonna play my close call. Play after any horror roll to reroll any one die. This one, come on, be a success. Okay, change of plans. I'm not gonna go through spaces. I'm gonna go two spaces with the one success that I've got for sprinting. Move up to two spaces and lose a time. So I lose a time. I'm gonna move up to two spaces. I'm gonna go this way. One, two, trying to come around. I guess I could come back though to the dock. No, I wanna get these. I'm gonna save these people who are making out. Now I'm going to walk. So again, I would really like to have two successes. I'm gonna, oh my gosh. I'm gonna discard these two cards to turn the, oh, I, to turn this into one success. Jeez, what a nightmare. So that means I can move up to one space and I lose one time. So I'll lose the time and I move up to one space, which is just garbage. But that's better than taking a health hit and losing two time to move one space. I'm gonna hold on to my guard card and I'm gonna be done. What a disaster. What a disaster. So now it's my planning phase. I have four time left. You know what? I'd really like a distraction to lower the horror. So I'm gonna take a distraction. That's three. And then for one, I'll take my other close call. That's all my time. So that resets. I'm gonna take my zero cost cards, add them to my hand. So this will be my hand. And then all of these cards go back into the tableau. And it's the killer phase. Okay. All right, Hans. Hans is not in a space with anyone, so no one is going to get an attack, but we're going to flip over our tarot card. He's just standing there, which is pretty accurate. Oh no, the ho The horror goes up by two, but guess what? I forgot to put the horror up by one for Dark Feast. So that's the one for Dark Feast, which doesn't affect how we played the last round, but now it goes up by two. We're down to one die. This is, it is horrifying. So he's gonna target either the closest victim or final girl, and he's closest to this victim. So he's gonna target and then he's gonna move two. So he'll move one and that'll put him in the space with the victim. He doesn't attack, but he will next turn. And then he's gonna come into here and he's gonna kill all those people. And I'm just running off. No wonder I'm the final girl. I'm just hiding all alone. I'm not even trying to help anyone else. No one panics because no one died yet. All right, I've got to focus and distract. 
So I'm gonna do distraction first because even if I get no successes, I can still lower the horror by one. It's gonna cost me four time, but that'll at least put me back to six, which means I'll have two dice to be able to roll for focus. So let's roll this die and hope we get a star. My dice luck is on display right now, isn't it? <laughs> so the horror will come down one, but it did cost me four, which is gonna make it real hard to buy cards next turn. Okay, that was my distraction. Now I'm gonna try and focus. So I'm gonna roll two dice now, and I'm gonna hope to be able to lower the horror even more. Gosh, I hope, because I really need it. I'm gonna play my close call and uh, I'm gonna re-roll one die, this one. Oh no, why? I'm gonna discard two cards to turn this into a success, which will lower the horror by one, but it costs me a time. And that's it, that's all I can do. So now we go into planning. I only have one time to spend, so I'm gonna spend that getting this close call and taking the rest of my free actions. Then these will go back into the tableau. We did at least, we gave ourselves a little buffer. So here's the problem. Hans is now gonna target in his killer phase the closest victim, this one, he's going to kill. This victim is dead, I couldn't get to him in time. So the bloodlust goes up by one. So he's still doing two damage, uh, one movement. Now there's a panic phase. If a victim was killed this turn, all other victims in that space will panic. Now, that was the only victim in that space, so we're okay. So now, now that we've <laughs> sorted that, we flip over a tarot card. Please don't just send the horror right back to where it was. <gasps> yay, oh, yay. Oh, oh, these people are gonna be saved. Hans wants me. He's always wanted me. He's gonna target the final girl, move to an attack. Okay, so what's his closest path to me? Cause this is where he's moving now. This is actually really good cause I'm far away and it's getting him away from these victims. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, if he goes that way, one, two, three, four, five, if he goes that way, one, two, three, four, five, if he goes that way. So it's all kind of the same. So I'm going to send him to the dock because I like the idea. So when there's ambiguity in this game, they tell you you can either do whatever consistently throughout your game, choose whatever you think is the most hilarious, whatever you think is the worst choice for you or whatever you think works the most thematically, which is the one I'm going to do. And I like the idea of Hans jumping into the lake and then walking out of the lake like a horrifying monster toward me, especially because I also know I'm coming toward here and so he's gonna try and cut me off at the pass there. So he moves one, two to the dock toward me. He won't attack because we're not in the same space. These people at the bonfire don't even know how lucky they just got. Now it's my turn again. I need to save victims. I need to save these victims. Let's walk and walk and see what we can do to save them. Okay, so I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna hope I can move up to two spaces. So two dice. You know what? Change of plans. We're gonna go to the utility shed and see if we can get some good items. So that's gonna be one. I'm only using that one. That's gonna cost us a time. Well, I can't convert this anyway because that's a failure. Now I'm gonna walk again, see if I can get into the utility shed. I'm gonna roll two dice. I'm gonna play close call to re-roll all dice for two, time. Come on, now I get two successes. Okay, so I'm going to go up to the utility shed so that next turn, hopefully I can search and get something good. I'm gonna hold on to the rest of my cards. I'm gonna be done for now. I'm going to use my three remaining time to buy a search for two and then a close call for one. That goes back to six. I get my zero cost cards back. And these cards go back to the tableau. Okay, he's targeting, but he won't kill because no one's in the space with him. So let's see what his terror says. He's just standing there. The horror goes up by two, which means I'm down to one die again. He's going to target whoever's closer, final girl or victim, and move twice. I think the bonfire's closer. That's only two away. He can just get there with his movement. I'm still 
four, five spaces away from him. So he's gonna go one, two. Feast time for old Hans the Butcher here at the bonfire where there's just a whole crowd of teen summer campers. <sighs> but he, wasn't, he won't attack yet. But that's bad. No one died. So we skip the panic phase, the upkeep phase. We're gonna leave things where they are because I really wanna search. And then we're gonna have to start, hopefully I can get a really good weapon because we need to start going after Hans. We just do because everyone's just gonna die. I wanna focus and try and lower our horror level because I really wanna roll two dice. Please be a success. Okay, I need to discard two cards to make this, to make this happen. I'm gonna discard the short rest and the weak attack. Okay, so that converts to a success, which means I will lower the horror by one and I spend a time. Okay, great. Now I can roll two dice for all my other things this turn, and I'm going to search and roll two dice and really hope I get two successes. Close call. I'm spending two to re-roll everything. Oh my gosh, how can I keep getting the same thing over and over and over again? If I don't convert, I'm going to take the top item, but the horror is going to go up by two, which is awful because then the bloodlust will start going up. And I just don't think we can afford to do that. So we have to discard these two cards to take the top item and lose a time. Oh my gosh, I used all of my cards. I hope this is something good. Please be something good. First aid kit. Every time you use an action to recover health, recover an additional heart. Okay, so for now we'll put that in hand because we have two hands and now both of our hands are full. I'm gonna take a sprint for my two time. That spins it, we go back up to six. Killer time. He's gonna kill one of these. Ooh, this one dies. His bloodlust goes up. The horror goes up. Okay, uh, we flip over a terror card. He just came out of nowhere. Place Hans with the farthest target possible. Up the horror, draw the next terror card. I'm the farthest target. I think he's gonna come to me. All of a sudden here, the horror goes up. It can't go up anymore, so the bloodlust goes up. Mm. And then we draw the next terror card. This is so bad. I have... You can't save us. No one can. If there are no victims on the board, no, there are, so we don't have to discard this. All victims in your space must panic twice. There are no victims in my space, so he's going to attack me, and then he's going to go after victims. So he's targeting me, we're in the same space, and he will do an attack. He's going to do two damage. So in this situation, I think I'm pretty lucky. I have this trash can lid. So I'm gonna pull out these tiny little tokens that look like little breath mints. I'm going to put them just here with these other tokens, and I'm gonna mark off one use of this trash can lid to help me ignore one damage because he's going to do two, and I'm going to ignore one, so I will take one damage from him just popping over and then you know but now he's going to target a victim and move toward them he's going to he's going to target the people making out everyone i try to save is getting targeted and killed by him i am making it worse for everyone else i'm not helping anyone he's like honing in on who i'm trying to help and then he goes after them he did it with this person he's going to do it with them now hans vindictive. So he moves one toward, uh, well, let's see. He's one, two, three, four away. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. So he is targeting the people at a uh, make out point. Well, that could have been worse. So we need to do the panic phase. Now someone did die this turn here at the fire pit, but no one panics because the killer left. So they think they maybe they're safe here even though they're there with the dead body of their friend. No, they're not. Hans slung it over his shoulder. He's taking it off for a feast later. That got dark. So because he left, they won't panic. So they stay there. So now it's me. I have a weak attack. I should, um, at the upkeep phase, I think I should switch out for my aluminum bat and just go after him and try and beat him up. I can use my weak attack. Okay, so this is upkeep. So before we start, I'm gonna swap these items out 
into my backpack and give myself my aluminum bat, which is gonna take up two hands. Then I'm gonna try and move into his space and do a weak attack. Now this is a problem because I only have one. Before I do this, can I lower? Let's try and focus first. Maybe I can lower the horror so that I can get two dice. Please. Classic, classic. All right, my focus and my short rest are being discarded. So I can turn this into a success. So I can lower the horror by one, but I will lose a time. So now I can roll two dice to walk and attempt to attack. So I'm gonna walk, try and walk into a space. I actually only need one success for this to do what I want it to do. Okay, fine. One success, that's fine. I can move up to one space. I'm gonna move into his space. It's time to get brave or foolish. I'm gonna lose a time. And now I'm going to play weak attack and I'm going to use my aluminum bat to modify this attack. So if I do damage, this will do an additional damage. And then also this says, if I inflict damage on the killer, I may meet with this weapon, I may immediately discard a minor dark power, including any health markers remaining on the card. There are no minor dark powers in play right now, so we don't have to worry about that at the moment, but I would like to do the extra damage if possible. So let's hope I get two successes. Come on. Okay, I get one success, which will do one damage plus the additional from the bat, but I'm also gonna take a damage. So I lose one health, but Hans loses two. Okay, so that's something. And now I would like to run away. Let's try to sprint away from here. Okay, okay, okay. So that's one success, which means I can move up to two spaces. I will lose a time. So, you know what? Forget these people. I'm coming to the fire pit, try and help them. Okay, one, two. Okay, I sprinted two spaces away. I'm gonna hold on to this walk and I'm gonna spend my three remaining time to get something. Again, I think having the distraction might be a good thing because I think the horror's gonna go back up. I really need to save more victims. That's the focus, try and save some victims. Um, that's what's going to help me, I think, to unlock my powers and to heal. Cause I'm down to three health. So we've spent our three to get distraction. Ooh, we are only gonna have those two cards next turn. That's not great. So all of these go back into the tableau. We have two cards for next turn. Not amazing. And it is now the killer phase. So he'll target an attack. He's not in a space with anyone. So now we flip over the terror card. Run for your life. Oh no, all victims that are not in your space must panic. That's everyone. <laughs> okay, so let's start with these two. So we finally are gonna get some panicking. So we're gonna roll dice and see which direction they go. If we roll a three to a six, they'll run off this way. So two dice. Okay, one and four. So one is gonna stay here they're like, I'm not getting out of this car. And the other one's like, I'm not staying here. And so they go this direction. So they move over here. They've split up. It's not good. So we have one, two, three, four, five to deal with here. Oh, it feels so nice rolling five dice. It's the most stars I've rolled the whole game. Okay, so one, so two to five will go this way. Six goes that way and one will stay. So one will stay because of the one. Three, that person will go here. Five, that person will go here. Another five, that person will go here. And a six, that person will go there. They're running closer to me, so this might actually be good for us because now I can pop there and pop here and get them off the map. I can hopefully save two people next turn which would be really great. So that actually, that might work for us. If he's in a space with someone, he will now attack. He's not. So now he's going to target the closest victim and move toward them. And I believe that's this person who panicked out of their makeout session. So he'll go one toward them. They'll probably die next turn. It's my turn and I don't have a lot of cards. Wow, you know what was nice? Our horror didn't go up. So that's awesome actually. Let's do our walk. Gosh, come on. I'm gonna roll two dice and it would just, it would be perfect. Perfect if I could get two successes. <gasps> <sighs> yes!
Yes, okay, so I can move up to two spaces. It will cost me a time, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over here. I'm gonna say, come with me if you wanna live. I'm the only person who's ever said that line. I came up with it, it's original. And two of my victims are gonna be very scared and go come with me. The other one is like, no, and they stay behind. And then we're gonna move back here to this exit and they're gonna go. We're gonna save both of them. So they, I go, 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 you can get out. And they run off. We've saved two people. <laughs> okay, first I'm definitely going to lower the horror by one. Then should we get time? Should we heal? Or should we move up to two spaces? I think I'm gonna heal. So that gives me one heart back. Oh, that's so good. I'm so excited about that. Two more and we can flip over to our final girl, final ability. So now I'm gonna try and get a distraction. So if I can get two successes again, that would be amazing. But I'd be okay with one success. I really, I can't, anything else is a failure. Then it would be very bad. I'll lose all my time if I fail. Okay, one success. Okay, that's not horrible. I actually gain a time from that, which is really good, and the horror goes down again. So we're back to four. It would be so nice to get it down to th so I could roll three dice. Okay, that was a good turn. So these, these stay here. We do our planning phase. I have six to spend. I wanna be able to save more people. So I think what I'm gonna do is spend two for another sprint. Then I'm going to spend three, one, two, three, for another distraction. I really wanna lower the horror level. And then my last one for a close call. And then I get back all of these beautiful cards that cost nothing. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight cards. So should be I should be able to do a fair amount next turn. And then these will go back into the tableau. Distraction goes there. And then walk goes here. Okay, now it's the killer phase. So first he will target an attack if someone's in the space with him. No one is. So now we flip over the, we're running out of tarot cards. It's gonna be the finale really soon. I'm actually surprised none of our tarot cards have had us pull any more events. That's interesting. Okay. Let's go see if the rumors are true. These idiots. Place two new victims in the space where the killer started the game. Oh, speak of the devil, here comes an event. So here's two new victims in the space where the killer started the game, which was at the cabins. The horror goes up by one. Of course it does, but we still have two dice because we knocked it down quite a bit last turn and then we'll pull an event. I hope it's something good. Y'all, I really want it to be something good. Clingy campers. There is no penalty for the first victim you save during the action phase. For each additional victim saved, we take damage because they're scared and they don't want to let go of us. Gah! That wasn't good. No one died, so there's no panic. Upkeep. I'm gonna hold on to my aluminum bat, I think. I don't think I'm gonna swap anything out yet. All right, let's see if we can save some more people. So let's try to walk to pick up some victims. I roll two dice. Okay, so that's one success. So I get to move up to one space. That's not horrible. And that'll cost me, oh, I never reset my time. It'll cost me a time, so I'm down to five. What would be great is if I could sprint now. If I could sprint and move up to three spaces, I'll be able to take one, two, three. I could take two out and then just like honestly kind of forget about the rest of them. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Hopefully, come on successes, come on. What have I got here? I won't be attacking him this turn, so you know what? I'm going to discard my weak attack and my short rest to turn this into a success. So I can move up to two spaces, but I lose a time. So we're gonna go one, this one comes with me. This one will also come with me when we go two. All right, now I'm gonna try and, oh no, I'm out of walking. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna play this close call. I'm gonna reroll this die and hope that I get one more success so that I can move one more space to get them out of here because I thought I had another walk card in here and I don't. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. So we, we've done that. So now I can move, I'm gonna uh, count that as my second success so that I can have moved up to 
uh, three spaces instead of two. That still only costs me one time, so I don't need to adjust this again. So now I can move my third space here and these two will leave. Now the first one goes, but the second one really doesn't want to. So I'm gonna take a health damage for that. But now I can gain two time back and I can move up to two spaces and flip this card over. And I'm really excited about that. Where do we wanna go up to two spaces? We can just make our way back over. I think it, now it's time to start trying to kill this guy. So I'm gonna move two spaces. I'm gonna go one, two. Now we flip over and now things are getting dicey. <laughs> okay. So we've done that. So now anytime we would roll only one die, we'll roll two instead. So that will help us when the horror inevitably keeps going up. Now it's time for our planning phase. And we definitely want to be able to defend ourselves and attack, I think. So we have six time we can spend on our planning. We have a distraction and that's great. I think we need a retal, oh, retal oh boy. I think we need the retaliate for four. So I have two left if I do that. I think we should get the guard for two. Let's have some defense and also some attack. The retaliate will let us do damage in return. So that's good. Okay, so then we take our zero cost card, which is the only one we had available is the walk. And we'll put everything else back into our tableau. Now it's the killer phase. Oh, we only have three health. Whew. Okay. So again, he'll attack if he's in the space with someone. He isn't, but he's so close to this one. So let's flip over our last tarot card of the game, which means soon we're going to get to this finale power, which is gonna be bad. Oh, it's a minor dark power. Cool, unholy speed. Hans moves one additional space for each boot. Also, here he's gonna gain two health. When we do damage to him, the health has to come off of that card first. Now, one good thing is our aluminum bat We'll discard that immediately if we deal damage with the aluminum bat. So hopefully we can just make that go away. Cause otherwise we're basically, he's basically back up to full health. Okay, he won't move, he won't attack. So no one panics. Our upkeep, we're gonna leave the way it is for the moment, I think. And I think we just go into my action phase now. Let's prepare ourselves. Let's get close to him, but also prepare ourselves. Cause we don't have any, I thought he was gonna come toward us and he didn't. That's why I have all this like defensive stuff, but we don't actually have anything offensive. So we can't really attack him this turn, but I can focus and do a distraction and try and lower the horror as much as possible. So I'm gonna do a distraction first. Oh, we didn't reset our time. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting that. We're gonna roll two dice and see if we can lower the horror. I don't want to, I don't wanna lose the four time, but also, I really don't want to spend two cards. So I think we are gonna take the zero success. The horror will go down, but we are gonna lose four time. That's not, it's not very good. I'm gonna try and do a focus. Come on. Okay, that's one success, which will lower the horror again, but we do lose a time. We're not gonna be able to get any new cards. What I'm going to do now actually, is now I can discard a card to get a time back. And I think I'm gonna discard this other focus just to get back a time so that we can afford to get some cards next turn. And then I'm gonna try and spend my walk to get closer to him. So let's see what happens. Oh my gosh, two fails. <gasps> this is bad. I can move up to one space and lose a health and spend two time or I can just spend two time. That's all our time. I won't be able to get any new cards. I can't lose the health, so we're just that's just a waste. So we just lose all our time and we can't afford to get any new cards. We're gonna have retaliate and guard, which is an awful, and then our, a couple of free actions, and that's it for next turn. And we're not any closer to him. His finale power is about to flip over. Hans, do your thing. <laughs> We need to reveal both our dark power because that hasn't revealed yet because he's been hunting me down rather than killing willy nilly. And we need to reveal the finale because there's no cards left in the tarot deck. Now I should have done this during the last upkeep phase. But let's see, let's see what happens. So now Hans will feed for every victim he kills, he recovers health. 
and his finale power, Bloodbath. Oh my gosh. He's gonna target, move twice, and attack twice. So it's, he's about, he's frenzying, basically. So this is what he does now. He targets, moves, and kills. So the closest victim is who he's gonna target. That's what this means, closest victim or final girl. And he's closest to this victim. It's, this is about to really ramp up. So he's gonna target this victim. He's gonna move into the space. He's gonna attack twice. Now he's only in here with one, but this victim will die. So his bloodlust goes up one. So his damage is now three. The horror goes up and he recovers the health. Oh my God. So we no longer draw terror cards because this is terrifying enough. So we would have a panic phase, except there are no more victims in his space. So we won't do that. And upkeep, I'm not gonna rearrange anything. And we've already dealt with our terror deck, finale power situation, reset my six. That's something I needed to do. I'm gonna try and short rest to heal. I need to give myself this, some, a, a sporting chance here. Horrible. Okay, I'm gonna have to convert this to a success. So I'm gonna discard these two cards to heal one and spend a time to get one success. And then I'm done, I'm stopping. I'm saving these cards, I'm stopping. That's it, that's all I'm doing. I have five time to spend and I need to get something good. I'm just gonna spend four to get Furious Strike and one to get Close Call. And then I pick these up, I'll have one movement and that's, that's what I'm gonna do. So this will reset, that was my five. These all go in here because they cost nothing. And then it's Hans's turn. So he's going to, t he's, he's just killing everyone now. Oh no. So he's going to target this victim. It's the closest one to him. He's gonna move here. He's going to kill them. He's going to eat them, which heals him. Need more heart tokens. His Hans has regenerative properties. So he heals one. Can he go above his max? What's he at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. He's now at his max, okay. His bloodlust goes up one. So he now will move two, three, every boot, three damage, and we have revealed his dark power there. Upkeep, I think we're okay. And now we do a thing. I'm gonna do a focus to try and lower the horror if I can a little more, but for the most part, I'm gonna stay here because he's gonna start targeting me and he's gonna get to me fast. So let's roll two dice. Okay, that's one success. So this goes down one and I lose a time. And then I'm gonna play my other focus. Let's see if we can get it to three dice. It would be so awesome. <sighs> it's so tough. We lose one more time, but we go down here. So we're close to it, but we, we don't quite have it. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to these. It's one, two, three, four, five cards. I have four uh, time to spend. So let's get an improvise for three and a close call for one. So that steps back to six. We put these back, oh, I'm gonna get these. Let me, let me see how many cards I have before I pick those up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm now at my hand limit, 10 cards. Hans's turn. He's gonna come toward me now. So he's targeting me, I'm the closest one to him. This looks adjacent, but it isn't. And he's going to move to three for each boot. So he can move up to six spaces. So he's about to be in my space. One, two, three, four, five. Now he was equidistant from there to this victim. One, two, three, four, five as well. But he's targeting me because remember we said earlier thematically, he's got a vendetta and I do too. And frankly, I want him to stop eating people, Hans. Let's change up your diet, try the whole 30, I don't know. He's going to attack me twice, which, if I can't stop this, will kill me. Because I only have four health and he will do three damage for each one. So first, I'm going to um, retaliate. So because, this is the first time I'm doing this, these blue cards are reaction cards, so I can play this on his turn. So I'm gonna retaliate. Hopefully I can get some successes and do damage back to him. Okay, I got one success, so I'm gonna reduce the damage from the attack by two, which is awesome. That means I'm going to only take one damage from that hit of the three he's doing. And then I'm going to do one damage back, which, oh, no, because I'm using my aluminum bat to modify this, 
Whenever you inflict damage to the killer with the aluminum bat, you may immediately discard a minor dark power, including any health markers remaining on the card. So this goes. Thank goodness. And then I think I will do, so that's that damage. Do I get to do both of those? So then do I get to do two damage as well? The one for here and the one for that? That's amazing. Okay, but now he's going to attack me again. And this will potentially kill me if I can't stop it. So, okay, so I'm gonna play my guard. This will not do any damage back, but it will hopefully keep me from taking damage. If I have no successes, I reduce by one. Yeah, I'm just gonna take that. No successes, I will reduce the damage by one, which means I'll take two. That's these. I'm down to my final health, which means I will get an additional die when I roll, which I'm really gonna need. Wow, that hurt, that hurt a lot. No one panics because no one died, but I've taken a beating. The upkeep phase, we're just gonna hold on to this aluminum bat and uh, see if we can do some damage. Okay, so I'm just gonna try and attack him. I'm gonna try for a furious strike. I roll three dice because this gives me an extra. Finally. This might end my turn though. If I don't get two, I basically like use so much energy. If I don't get two successes with this, I'll get to lower the horror with just one, but then this will end my turn. So let's pray for two successes. Okay, one and then two that could be converted. I'm gonna play my close call and I'm going to, I'm just gonna re-roll one. Oh my gosh. Oh, that worked, that worked so well, okay. Okay, so with my Fury Strike, I did two. So I'm gonna do two damage. Take that, Hans. And the horror goes down by one. This means I'm gonna roll four dice. Yes. And my turn is not over, which means I can go again. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight health. Oh my gosh, we need to play, let's play my improvise. Until this action phase ends, all threes and fours are successful if I can do this. I'm rolling four dice, I need two successes. I got one. Okay, so just for the next roll only, threes and fours are successful, which means we're gonna play, I just have my weak attack with my aluminum bat. Oh wait, I should have done an additional damage with my aluminum bat when I did my furious strike. Ha ha. But again with my aluminum bat, I'm doing a weak attack, but I'm rolling four dice and threes and fours will count as successes. So come on, I surely, I can do two damage. Yes, oh my gosh. So that's three successes. I do a damage for the attack and additional damage for the bat. So that's two. Yes. Oh yeah. I don't know that I can survive the next round, but here we are. I, that might be it. Should we short rest? Yeah, and then I'm gonna try and short rest to heal back. So four dice. If I heal, I'll lose my bonus dice, but I'm gonna die, I think, if I don't. So let's try and heal. This is back to regular amounts of successes, so that's one. So I'll lose a time, but I'll heal back one. So I have five time to spend, so let's get something awesome. Let's get, oh, I wish I had six. I'm gonna discard. I'm gonna discard this walk to get six. Um, I don't need to go anywhere. I'm gonna discard this other walk to get seven. So I've discarded those to get one time for each because I want to spend six on critical blow. That goes down to one. Then I only have one left. Oh. There isn't really anything I can get for one, is there? Because I have my close calls already. So actually I won't, I'll hold on to this card. Since I can't get anything with the time I would have earned with it anyway, I'll just not discard it. Okay, so then I get my free actions just focuses. It's not a great hand. And I have actually I have no I have no defense. So instead of spending six on this critical blow, instead I'm gonna have taken there was a guard here and I'm gonna take that instead because otherwise I'm gonna die. I need to try and defend myself. So he's probably gonna kill me now. It's been nice knowing you. So he is now going to attack me twice. Oh, I just don't, I don't think I can, I don't think I can avoid this at all. I will guard the first one. So I roll three dice. If I can get two successes, I will ignore all this damage, but then I'm gonna take damage. Okay, two successes. So I will ignore all the damage from the first attack, but he's going to attack me again. And that will do three damage. Now here's what happens. 
one, two. We flip this over. I am either dead right now or there's more life in here. And I <gasps> back it, you know, in a, in a classic horror movie twist. Let's see what happens. I'm just dead. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead. Super dead. I got him down pretty far though, I feel like. I feel like I did decently. Would he have come back to life? Let's find out. Oh, he would have, Hans, you're so bad. Well, sometimes people don't survive in horror movies and in this one, we sure didn't. Hans was brutal and we are super dead. But you know what, we saved five victims along the way, and you gotta feel good about that sacrifice. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Table for One. I had a blast playing Final Girl, and uh, I'm in a board game, so dreams do come true. Again, if you want your own copy of the Final Girl Paula promo and help support what we're doing here at Watch It Played, there is a link in the description below for where you can get your own. Don't forget to check out Rodney's how to play video for Final Girl. And if you're really enjoying these playthrough videos, make sure to check out the game played series hosted by Monique and Naveen right here on this channel as they go head to head in various games for two players. If you enjoyed this video, I'd like it if you gave it a like. And also if you wanted to share it with others who you thought might also enjoy it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, well, do me a favor and hit that button right now and make sure you turn on notifications so you always know when I have another episode for you. And let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite scary movie? I genuinely wanna know. And maybe I'll leave a little comment about mine. And until next time, thanks for watching.